number six, Nick. It is not the case that both Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system and the sun is a planet. All right. Go um, for it. Not parentheses J and S. Wait a minute. Parentheses? That's a new complication. Why, why, why do we need parentheses? So we know that those two are together. Yes, what word tells us that we need parentheses? Both. Both. Ah, what kind of a word is that? I gave a name for it. Herald word, yes. And in fact, there's a reason why I gave you a little table of herald words. They're not, they haven't been useful up to this point. They don't tell you anything about uh, where the letters go or where the logical symbols go. What do they tell you where they go? What kind of things do they tell you where they go? My question is obviously confusing. Parentheses is the answer. So the point of uh, the herald words is that the herald words uh, among other things, they're not the only thing that can tell you where parentheses go. What else can tell you where parentheses go? Parentheses. Punct punctuation, yes. Parentheses, yeah, well, that's cheating. Um, yes, uh, punctuation can help as well. But uh, I find that herald words can make things pretty um, foolproof, as we'll see. Uh, but yes, this is, uh, oh, 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 the word both, because the, the word both comes between the not and the j, we know that it doesn't, it doesn't just apply to the j. So in other, uh, it doesn't just apply to the j, it applies to the whole thing. Now, suppose you don't like parentheses. Suppose you have an irrational hatred of parentheses, like I have for the horseshoe. Uh, you might think that you don't need Parentheses. What might you think you could write instead? Okay. You're not supposed to know about that yet. You're supposed to get it wrong so that I can correct you and everybody learns. Uh, the wrong answer, which I was hoping to hear, which is kind of ironic, um, is you might think that you could just apply the not to both the J and the S. Right? That's tempting. But, is that logically equivalent to not, to the actual thing, which is not J and S? Let's see if it is. If it is, then it doesn't matter which one we write. We could write this one, or we could write this one. But if they're not equivalent, we can't use this one. So let's work it out. So J and S, so once again, S, I'm going to go true, false, true, false. What do I write on the J? True, true, false, false. Now, with this one, it's going to be pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to write uh, a truth value under the ampersand for what's in parentheses. So it's going to be J and S, essentially. And we know what that looks like. It looks like true, false, false, false. Yeah, just like this. Which tells me what do I write under the tilde? It's going to be the opposite of this, because if I'm uh, negating the truth value of everything in parentheses, well, this is the truth value of everything in parentheses, so the negation of that will be the opposite. Does that make sense? Looks quite a bit like an or to me. What's that? Looks quite a bit like an or to me. After, the, after you finish the... Yes. Uh, hold that thought. All right, so this is going to be false, true, because it's going to be the opposite of this. This is a false, so it's going to be false, true, true, true. All right, and I'm going to draw a circle around each of these to indicate that that's the truth value of the whole thing. Okay? Everybody see what I'm doing here? All right, now, actually, immediately, we can tell that this is not going to be equivalent to it. Not you, John, somebody else. How can I tell immediately that this is not going to be equivalent to this? Because it's an end, so it only has one. Yes, this is a conjunction. What do we know about conjunctions? There's one true and three falses. But wait a minute, what's happening here? Three trues and one false. So there's no way that this is going to be equivalent to this. Well, let's work it out. What do we know about conjunctions? How often are they true? When both are true. 
when both are true. What line is that going to happen? What, on what line are both not J and not S true? Line 4, because not J will be, uh, because J will be false, so not J will be true. Uh, S is false, so not S will be false, so this is going to be true on this line. On every other line, at least one is going to be false. Because if J is true, then not J will be false, so the whole thing will be false. And the same thing happens here. And S is true, so not S will be false. So you get this. Are they equivalent? No. They agree here and here, but that's true of and and or. Where they disagree is the middle two. And if there's any disagreement on any line, then they're not logically equivalent. Because obviously and and or aren't logically equivalent, but they agree on a couple of lines. So you have to agree on every single line to be logically equivalent. Now it turns out that thanks to De Morgan's law, Ethan, what is this equivalent to? Not I did actually tell you that when we were doing um, disjunctions. And you actually remember, which is amazing. Or you read the chapter. Oh, okay. But I do remember you said it. Uh, thank, you. thank you for making me feel good. Even if you like. All right. So, um, remember when we were doing, uh, I can't, there, there was an example when we were doing disjunctive syllogisms of, uh, I can't both do the dinner and take out the trash. We said that that wasn't equivalent to, uh, now that was, I can't both uh, t uh, do the dinner and, and take out the trash. It turns out that that was equivalent to either I don't do dinner or I don't take out the trash. Now this is a disjunction. Disjunctions are only false ones. When are disjunctions false? When they're both false. When they're both false. What line is that going to happen? One, because then not J will be, J is true, so not J will be false. S is true, so not uh, S will be false. So false or false is false. The rest of the time it will be true. And what do you know? It's the same. So that actually is equivalent by something called De Morgan's Law, which you don't have to know yet. Still don't have to know that. You will have to know that eventually. Uh, however, let's just keep it simple and include the parentheses. Let's not try and be too clever. So, we do need parentheses for this one because the not applies to both of them. <clears throat> All right, Jupiter is the largest planet. We've said it's true. The sun is a planet. False. I'm glad to you say that. The sun is a star. Good. All right, now we have two logical symbols. Which do I do next? Ampersand. Why do I do the ampersand next? Because it's in parentheses. This is just like math. Not hard math, don't be scared. Easy math, right? So for example, you learned, uh, let's see. What does this equal? Seven. Um, what does this equal? Eight. Eight, What's the difference? Well, that, yes, I know the friends see to the difference, but why the difference in number? Order of operations. Order of operations. Yes. Why was it you did the multiplication first here? It's not because it's the one on the left. What's that? Yes, why are you supposed to do multiplication first? Just because, right? There's something called the order of operations. Now, what is the point of the order of operations? Is it something that's a rule of nature that somehow multiplication is more valuable than addition? No. They just, somebody somewhere stipulated that uh, we should do multiplication first. So, there is, amongst the... Um, Arithmetical functions, multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, there is an order of operations. In other words, there's like a hierarchical ranking. Multiplication, more important than addition. It gets to go first. Basically, there's a class system. But in logic, communism. 
They're all equal. There's no class system. So, uh, which is more important, conjunction or disjunction? They're all the same. So there is no order of operations. Consequently, you can never write anything like this where you have two of them without parentheses. There isn't even a, a rule of where you do the one on the left first. So, if you see something like this, it's wrong. There has to be parentheses. Because otherwise you don't know which of them, suppose you know this is true, this is false, and this is true. Which one do you do next? Do you do the ampersand or the or? This doesn't say. You have to have parentheses, either there or there. But not both, you can't have that. Okay? So that's an important fact about logic. It's communist. Um, now, but order of operations, you know, you're familiar with the idea that you do the stuff in parentheses first. So the reason why this is 8 is because you worked out 3 plus 1 first, which is 4, so 2 times 4 is 8. We're all familiar with that. That wasn't, that wasn't a shock to anyone, right? There wasn't anyone who didn't know that the right answer was 8 there, I hope. Otherwise, I will weep for the American educational system. Okay, so, long story short, I work out the ampersand next. What do I write under the ampersand? False, because we happen to know that with ampersands, the only way it's true is if they're both true, but here what, the second one is false, so it's false. So I write false there. Do I circle that? No. Because what does circle mean? It's the truth value of the whole thing. But it's only the truth value, it is the truth value of everything in parentheses, so I'm going to put some kind of shape around it. Let's draw a square. All right, now what? How do I finish up? What do I write under the tilde? A T, because it's going to be the opposite of the... So we're going to negate the entire contents. What is the truth value of the entire contents? It's false. So the negation of that is going to be true. And then what do I do for that? I do circle that. Everybody, okay? Everybody on board with that? Makes sense. Yeah? All right, we have to get, make sure that we, we're happy with each step, because each step is simple, but there ends up being several of them. We don't want you stumbling at any point. All right, Hyungyu, can you do number seven, please? So, either the sun is a planet, or if Earth is a planet, then there is intelligent life on Mars. I should say Earth is, oh, it does say. One of these, I know there was something for this. Yeah, so that's right, number six, it should say Jupiter is the largest planet. I just noticed. All right, so symbolize away from you. So do it without parentheses first. Um, so just go through and give me the letters first. S or... Uh, right, yeah, let's, let's do it in this order. So go through. For each component proposition, give me a letter. S. What's the next letter? E. E. What does the E stand for, Jordan? Oh, the Earth is a planet. That's right. Not just the Earth. All right. And what's the next letter, Hugh? Uh, I should say I. Good choice. All right. Now, of course, there has to be at least one symbol between each of them. What comes between the S and the E? A or little V. Uh, what comes between the E and the I? And then the arrow. Yeah. Now, are we done, everybody? No. no. Why not? Because of what I just told you. Good, you were listening. In other words, there is no order of operations, so we have to have parentheses. Okay, there are two choices. Let's write it over here. We've got S or E arrow. I. Uh, here is choice A. Here is choice B. Who's ever been to the optometrist? This one or this one? This one or this one? Sound familiar? Yes. All right, so which one is it? The second one. How do you know? 
Yes, there, there are two ways you can tell. One of them is the commas help you out. But the other way is what word? What's that? What's that? Then, no. Then tells you where this is. We've already used up all that then can tell us. Well, in this case, it, it can be, but in this case, actually, it's not really either that tells you. So if I got rid of the either and I got rid of the commas, uh, this would still be the right answer because of what word? If. It's the position of the word if. That's what tells you uh, that this is the right answer. What kind of a word is if? in my strange terminology, a herald word. Okay, let's learn how to use the herald words. Because what they tell you is where the parentheses go. That's the point of them. So when you don't need parentheses, they're pretty much redundant. But when you need them, they're useful. So, suppose I have something like this. A, I'm going to replace uh, component propositions with letters already. A and B or C, then D. Now, I've already done the first pass and replaced all the propositions with letters. Second pass, I replace all the uh, logical words with the appropriate symbols. Where do the parentheses go? The answer is, you have no way of knowing. This is actually a logically ambiguous sentence, because it does matter where the parentheses go, just as it matters in math. In math, depending on whether or not you have parentheses, you get a different answer. Same thing applies in logic. You, you might get true one way, you might get false the other. So, it matters where they go. Uh, so, a correctly structured sentence won't leave it ambiguous. I will try and remove the ambiguity by adding um, Harold words. I'm going to add two right up the front. There. If either A and B or C, then D. That doesn't even sound grammatical, but it is. And it tells you where the parentheses go. Does anyone think they know? Josh. Um, parentheses around A and B. And then parentheses. Now notice. Uh, we can't leave it there because of these two. These two are still on the same level. You can't have that. So you've got to separate them. It's like dogs. They have to know the, the pecking order. You have to, or you have to pen them up with parentheses. You can't have them on the same level or they'll fight. Um, parentheses before the first parenthesis and then after C. Yes. There's no rule. You don't have to use like square brackets for the next level. You could just use regular parentheses, but I just like to do it, so I'm going to do it. Can't stop me. All right, who agrees? That's correct. How do we work it out? Here's how you do it. So we've already seen uh, how to get to the get to the point without the parentheses. Basically, you, you scan left to right. You replace propositions with letters, and you replace logical words with their relevant symbols. Only very rarely will you trip up. There are occasions where you have to change the order. For example if it said um, A if B. We haven't had that happen, but uh, if that happens, you have to change it around and have B comes first, because A if B means B arrow A. Remember that? Okay, so if that happens, you would have to change the order, but usually you can just keep it in the order that it comes. Okay, so we've done that. Now, to work out where the parentheses go, you start on the right and you move left. So, you look at the first uh, logical symbol, the then, and you say to yourself, okay, uh, conditionals have a consequent and they have an antecedent. I know what the consequent is. It's D. There's nothing else after the, uh, the arrow that it could be. So, I know that that's D. But I don't know yet what the antecedent is. The antecedent could be just C, or it could be B or C, or it could be A and B or C. What's going to tell me what the antecedent is? The position of what word? 
if. So I look for where that if is. If the if, if the if was here, what would be the antecedent of this? Just C. Just C. So I would put parentheses around there. But where is the if in fact? Right up the front. So that tells me everything between the if and the then is the antecedent. So we put these big ass brackets around it. Okay, to group it all together. Now, uh, suppose we had A and B or C in brackets, we can't leave it as that because the and and the or need to be separated. So we keep going up and we go to the or. We say, okay, I know that C in this case, because we put this bracket here, C is the right hand disjunct, but now I want to know what the left hand disjunct is. Is it B or is it A and B? What tells me what the, uh, what the left hand disjunct will be? The position of the herald word for or, which is either. And where is that? That's in front of the A. So you know that A and B has to be grouped together as the disjunct. Does that make sense? All right. So suppose we have, again, A and B or C then D. Uh, see what happens if we say that the there. See if you can work out where the parentheses go there. So basically, it's going to look like this again. but you need to work out where the parentheses go. Work it out. Use pencil and paper. Or if you're bold, pen and paper. So, it's A and either B? Yes. A and either B or if C then D. Now notice, I haven't used any punctuation, but you sh still should be able to tell because of herald words, those wonderful things. Who thinks they know? Brent? Um, I put brackets before the B. Before the B. And after the D. Okay. And I put parentheses around before the C and after the D. Like that? Who agrees? That's right. Now, so how do we do it? We go to, we work from right to left. We see the then. We know that the D is going to be the consequent, but we want to know what the antecedent is. Oh, the if is right here. So we know that C alone is the antecedent. Okay, so we move, but now we've still got this problem of the and and the or have to be separated. So I go to the next one, it's or. I want to know, is B the disjunct, or is A and B the disjunct? Oh, the either's here, so it's just the B. There you go. Now, this doesn't always happen, but here's a rule you could write down if you were so inclined. If all of the herald words are there, which I, hasn't happened in any of these yet, but what is the, uh, actually, what is the missing herald word here? Which one didn't have a herald word? And didn't have the herald word. So where would the both be? What's that? At the beginning. Now, what is the main connective? What is the one that you do last out of these, in this case? The and. That's the one you do last because it's outside of all parentheses. So we call that the main connective because the one that you do last is the one that you would write the truth value for the whole thing under, right? So, so let's say, let's say, uh, this is true, uh, this is false, uh, this is true, this is false. How would, let's work out the truth value of the whole thing. What would we do first? The and, the or, or the conditional? Condition. Conditional, because that's the most inside, right? Inside, uh, the furthest inside. What would I write under the conditional, now that you've memorized the truth tables? False. 
false, yes, because that's the case. The only case where it's false is where the only signature in the consequence is false. So false, and I'm going to put a triangle around that one. So, the, the, so think of this as like a block that has truth value false now. All right, what do I do next? The or. What do I write under the or? False. False. Because uh, the first disjunctive B, which is false, is false, or this whole thing, which is false. That's the only time when a uh, disjunct is false. And there was a square around that. Finally, what do I do? The conjunction, and what do I write under that one? Also false. Because with a conjunction, they have to be both true, but this one is false. So it's true, and this whole thing in square brackets, and the truth value of the whole thing in square brackets is what's under the main connective in square brackets, which is the or. So it's true and false, which is false. What do I do with that F? Circle it. Why? Because it's the truth value of the whole thing. So where do you write the truth value of the whole thing? Under the main connective, which is the and. Whose trailer word is the first one in the sentence? The main connectives. That's what happens if you have trailer word. That was the word I used to use until I realized that trailers come after. So I used herald because they come before. Um, maybe I was thinking of movie trailers. Herald word. So whose herald word comes first? The main connectives. But that's only if you've got all of them. So if you've got all of the herald words, the one that comes first will indicate what is going to be the main connective. What's the main connective? What's the main connective in this one? The conditional, right? The main connective is the conditional here. So what's the first word going to be? If. There it is. So, if you want to know, so if I had to say what kind of a proposition this whole thing is, it's a complicated conditional. What kind of a proposition is this one? It's a complicated conjunction. But it is a conjunction because the main connective is an M. And this one is a conditional because the main connective is a conditional. Okay? All right, let's go back to what we were doing. And uh, how did we work out that it was this one? Because of the position of what word? If. Because we, we look at this one, we see that then, and then we want to know, it, is just E going to be the antecedent, or is S or E going to be the antecedent? Well, the if comes here, so it's just E, so it's like that. Yeah? Everybody with me so far? Does this make sense? I don't want to lose you at this point. All right, sun is a planet. False. Uh, Earth is a planet. True. There is intelligent life on Mars. We don't know. Let's play it safe. We don't know. The Mars Curiosity rover is there, but I guess it's not life. It hasn't achieved sentience like Skynet. All right. Um, what do we do next? Well, uh, which of these do we do next? The or or the conditional? Conditional, because it's in front seat. Can we write a truth value under that conditional? No, because it does actually matter what this is. If we look at our, uh, if we look at our truth table for conditional, where is our truth? Yeah, here we go. If we look at our truth table for conditional, we see that when the antecedent is true and the consequent is true, the whole thing is true. But when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, the whole thing is false. So if we don't know what this is, we can't know what this is. So we're going to have to write a question mark under there. What about this one? <coughs> Don't know either, because this one is false, so it matters what this one is. If it's true, then the whole thing is true. If it's false, then the whole thing is false. So, question mark. That's a bit annoying. We don't know what the truth value of that one is. But, we have to be honest. Okay. Uh, who is next? Seth. If frogs can have the cheetahs can run, they can fly. Alright, symbolize. What's between the C and the P? Arrow. And what's between the F and the C? Ampersand. 
Okay, again, we've got two choices. Parentheses around the F and C or around the C and P. Which one? Around the F and C. Who agrees? You should all agree because of the position of what word? If. Yeah. If, yeah, that's right. So this whole thing is going to be a conditional because the first word is if. All right. Uh, frogs can hop. True. True. Cheetahs can run. Yeah. What are cheetahs? The fastest land animals. So, hell yes, they can run. Penguins can fly. Yes. False. Sad, isn't it? They can swim very well, but it's not the same. All right, what do I do first? The ampersand or the conditional? Ampersand, because it's in parentheses. And what do I write under there? Everybody? True. True. Because it's true and true, which is true. So that means that the, the whole antecedent of this conditional is true. So it's if true, then false, which is? False. So this whole thing is? False. So don't say that. If frogs can hop and cheetahs can run and penguins can fly? Not true. You'd be a liar if you said that. All right. Number nine. Brian. If Barcelona is in Spain, then if Paris is not in Portugal, then Boston is in Canada. B, arrow, Parentheses. Oh, okay. Not You're doing it too P. fast. Let's wait on the parentheses. Not P. Not P. Good. So what does P stand for? Uh, Paris is in Portugal. Good. P stands for Paris is in Portugal. So if you want to say Paris is not in Portugal, we negate it. Okay? Uh, arrow. B. B. Uh, did you say B? Yeah. That's wrong. Why? Because you can't have two Bs to stand oh, for two okay. different things. Then we'll say C. We will. Okay. So, Barcelona is in Spain. True. The hell with the Catalan separatists. Uh, Paris is in Portugal. False. Paris is, in fact, in Texas. What do I write? So, what do I write under the tilde? True. True. It is true that Paris is not in Portugal. Uh, Boston is in Canada. False. It's, in fact, in England. And I guess you have one named after it here, too. All right. Um, parentheses. So, now there's three places the parentheses could go here. They could go around the B and the P, they could go around the not and the C, or they could go between the not and the P and the C. Where is your choice, Brian? Uh, around the tilde and C. Tilde. Tilde. Yes. Who agrees? How do we know? Yes, now in this case, of course, it's slightly complicated because we've got two thens. But if you work backwards, uh, where does this then go? It'll be, um, well, if they're right next to each other, it'll be a little bit complicated. But as it's here, you know, uh, you look for the first if. And the first if you come, um, come across is directly before Paris is not in Portugal. So you know that the antecedent of this then is going to be just not P. Okay, so what do I write under this arrow? False, because the antecedent, remember, is not P, which is true. So it's if true, then false, which is false. What do I write under this conditional? False. Also false, because the antecedent is true, and the consequent is this whole thing, which is false. So it's if true, then false, which is False. Everybody comfortable with this? Everybody feeling happy and relaxed and groovy? All right. Number ten. Destin. If either Ottawa is in Canada or Paris is in Portugal, then Los Angeles is not in the U.S. Okay. Symbolize away. O or I'm going to leave a gap before the L. Why am I going to do that? Oh, not L. Not L. So what does L stand for? Uh, not. What does L stand for? Los Angeles. Not in the United States. No. That's what not L stands for. So what does L stand for? Oh, it is in the USA. Yes. Los Angeles is in the USA. All right. Ottawa is in Canada. Everybody. Everybody. It's pretty important you know that, because what is Ottawa? 
the capital of Canada, your neighbor to the north. When they invade, you'll need to know that. <laughs> They've got you in their sights. They're just biding their time. You know, uh, what was it? Was it the, the Canadians did burn Washington at one point. So they, they, they're a genuine threat. All right, Paris is in Portugal. Paris is in Portugal? Los, Los. Los Angeles is in the United States? True. True. So Los Angeles is not in the United States? You know that used to be true? In other words, Los Angeles used not to be in the United States? Where was it? Part of Mexico. So Mexicans didn't come here, you came to Mexico. All right. Ottawa, so where, uh, are we done? Destiny, are we done? What do we need? Where do we need them? Well, you tell me. <laughs> um, What's the first word? It. That's a clue. Okay. So, the first word Like that? Yeah. That's all the, the parentheses you need. No. You don't need any more. Oh. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you never, uh, incidentally, you never need parentheses around the whole thing. Okay, so if you've got parentheses uh, right at the beginning, right at the end, they're redundant. You don't need those. All right. Um, o or uh, P, true value of that is? True or false is? Everybody? True or false is true, yes. Because uh, with a disjunction, you only need one of them to be true. So if true, then false is? False, so the whole thing is? False. Yeah? Don't worry, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. I have a question. Yes? So, what if we don't know like, the truth value of one of them? There is this thing called Google. How on an exam would it be able to Google? No. In the exam, you can just ask me. But, uh, uh, yeah. It, you're, not being, you're not really being tested on your general knowledge. So, if you genuinely don't know, you should ask. Uh, some of them, though, will be cases where I will deliberately have chosen something that is unknown. So, and we'll see one of those in a second. Well, we already saw one with the Plato's maternal grandfather. If anyone claims to know that, they're lying. All right, or they're, or they're actually 2,000 years old. Number 11. Eric. Two sharks and swim with them. So, S, then E. S what? Oh, oh, S, E, yes, what's next? Uh, what letter comes next? Uh, L. L for lobsters can play basketball. And finally? E. For penguins can program computers. Silk. What goes between the S and the E? Then. Uh, if logs, if shop, no, that doesn't go between the S and the E. Oh, and. Yes, and, ampersand. What goes between the E and the L? Your previous answer. And. No, <laughs> no, the one before that. Then. Then, there we go. Between the L and the P? Four. Okay. All right, now we, gotta do, we need uh, at least a couple of um, pairs of parentheses. Oh, yes, of course. We forgot this important word. Where does that go? Before the L. Before the L. So I'm, I'm going to space it out a bit better. So S and E arrow not L. All right. Now, Eric, um, lay some parentheses on me. S over S. So right here? Yeah. And then not L or P. Where where? Outside the knot or between the knot and the L? Outside the knot. Mm -hmm. Inside the knot. What's that? Inside the knot. Why? What word tells tells you that it should go there? Either. Yes. 
That's right, because it is not the case that either. All right, because if you work backwards, remember, if we're doing this by my method of working from right to left, uh, we go to the or, and then we say, okay, what is the... We know that P is one disjunct. What is the left-hand disjunct? Is it L? Is it not L? Is it all of this? You look for the either, and it's after the not. So the, uh, you know that that goes between the not and the L. Who agrees with these parentheses as written? Good, because I do too. And I don't want anyone contradicting me. <laughs> All right, S. Sharks can swim. True. True. In fact, sharks have to swim. Why do sharks have to swim? So they're land breeders. Yes, they'll die if they stop swimming. What? That's right. Most fish uh, can move their gills and pump. Uh, the gills is how they get oxygen from the water. So the gills are full of, uh, you know, blood is pumped through the gills and it absorbs oxygen from the water that flows across it. Uh, most fish can move their gills to push the water across it, whereas sharks are so old and primitive, they're just like little vents. So the water has to be moving by itself, so they have to move through the water. So if a shark attacks you, hold it still, and eventually it'll suffocate and you'll be fine. Good advice. <laughs> Uh, eagles can fly. True. True. Yes, they can. Lobsters can play basketball. False. I think they their their claws burst the ball. Penguins can program computers. Not yet, at least. When it when it, we become the planet of the penguins, uh, then they will. All right. Does it matter if I do the ampersand first or the or first? No, because they're both actually within parentheses. So let's do the ampersand. What do I write under the ampersand? True. True. True, true and true is true. What do I write under the or? False. Because false or false is false. What do I do next? True. Write a true under the not. Why? Because it's the negation of everything in parentheses, and we know that everything in parentheses is this, which is false. So this is true. So, we have the conditional. What is the truth value of the antecedent of this conditional? It's true, because it's everything that, it's this. What is the truth value of the consequence of this conditional? <coughs> also true, because it's all of this, which, and that's the main factor. So it's if true, then true, which is? True. true. All right, uh, how are we doing time-wise? Yeah. Um, let's do number 14, Jordan. Um, if Jabberwockies have sharp teeth, then either Aristotle had a birth mark on his back, or the girls can fly. Okay. And so, J, um, arrow, A, uh, little B, and then, the parentheses around A. How do you know the parentheses go there? Because, yes, because of the either. So the either, the, this or, the left-hand disjunct. So everything between the herald word and the logical world word is going to be the, the, the left-hand proposition. So everything between the either and the or is the left-hand disjunct in this case, and it's just A. All right, Jabberwockies have sharp teeth. Unknown. Uh, no. Where does the where do Jabberwockies where does a Jabberwocky appear? In Alice in Wonderland. In Alice in Wonderland, that's right. It's uh, who tells that story? I can't remember. I think it's just a poem. Yeah, it is a poem. And it was turned into a movie by Terry Gilliam, who also directed a whole bunch of crazy movies, including Twelve Monkeys and Brazil, and uh, he was in Monty Python. So check that one. All right, Aristotle had a birthmark on his back. Yes, we don't know. Well, he, he kept it a secret. Eagles can fly. True. True. Well, we only know one truth value. Surely we can't work out the truth value of this whole thing. Or can we? Can we? Uh, all right, so what's the truth value of the or? True. How do we know that it's true? Because we know about disjuncts that only one of them has to be true. Here's disjuncts. And if, uh, the only way that they can be false is if they're both false. 
In all other cases where one of them is true, the whole thing is true. So we know that this is true. But we don't know this, so we can't look out the truth value of the conditional. Or can we? <laughs> we can. How can we? It's true. Why is it true? Exactly. Remember, conditionals can only be false one way. What is that? If the antecedent is true or the consequent is false. But wait a minute, the consequent is not false. So we know that this can't be false. Or to, uh, so, suppose I knew that J was false. Would I need to know any more? No. No, I would immediately know that the entire conditional is? True. true. Why? Once again, there's only one way for a conditional to be false. And that's if the antecedent is true. So if the antecedent is not true, in either case where the antecedent is not true, the whole thing... Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in either case where the antecedent is false, the whole thing is true. In either case where the consequent is true, the whole thing is true. So if you know that the consequent is true or the antecedent is false, you know the truth value of a conditional. All righty then. Um, what is the exact time, somebody? 12 hours. 12 hours. I've plenty of time. All right, good. Uh, 50. Samantha. Um, either snarks are scaly or if the Alright. Symbolize away. Um, S wedge and T. What was that? Little tilde. Little tilde. Uh, T, yeah. What was that? Arrow. Oh, arrow. And the last one? I'm, I'm going there. I'm assuming you said M. All right. Did you, oh, you said F for first person. Well, I'm going to use M. All right. Uh, parentheses. Before the tilde and after the M, you say. Who agrees? Let me see if I agree. Okay. Either not are scaling, or if tigers do not return, yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, snarks are scaly. Now, before it came to mean like uh, snipey comments, where does snarks appear? Well, it's just a type of sharks. Maybe it is, but uh, it's actually there's a, a poem by Lewis Carroll who wrote Alice in Wonderland called "The Hunting of the Snark." It's not in either of the Alice books, but it's a long poem about this group of people who set out to catch a snark. The only trouble is nobody knows what a snark looks like, but they do catch one in the end, and it ends up disastrous. Okay, but as nobody knows what they look like, we don't know if they're scaly. Tigers have stripes. True. So tigers do not have stripes. Where do I write that? Under the tilde. Uh, the first person on Mars will be Chinese. We don't know. Actually, uh, what country has just landed a probe on Mars besides the United States? Russia. Not Russia. India. India. It's true. And there's cost. I think uh, that's right. Uh, our Mars probe cost like billions and billions. Their Mars probe cost less than the movie Gravity cost to make. <laughs> so, but they got it there. Uh, but it didn't have any people in it, so. All right. Um, what can we do? Samantha, what do, can we work anything out? What would be false? What do, so, we're doing the conditional next. What would the conditional be? Or alternatively... <laughs> well, let's look. We know, we don't know what the consequent is, right? But we do know that the antecedent is false. Let's look at our truth table for conditionals. When the antecedent is false, the whole thing is... True. So what do we know the conditional is? True. Which means, what is the disjunction? 
also true, because we don't know what this is, but we know that this one is true, and we know that in a disjunct, if one of them is true, the whole thing is true. Right? So the whole thing is true. Number 16. Say that. Yes. If there is light on the other side of the universe, then the transcarbon base, then either, either it will look like us or it won't. That's right. So, I'll look for light. I don't know. Parentheses. Oh, well, let's save the parentheses till the end. Okay. Uh, C. C for carbon base. What goes between the C and the U? I've helpfully circled it. So if there is life on the other side of the universe, then, if it is carbon based, then, either it'll look like us or it won't. Now, I'm going to complain about one thing that you have done so far. What am I going to complain about? The W. Yes, I don't like that W. Why not? It should be not you. Why does it matter? Because you're trying to represent the same thing. Yeah, because uh, we know <coughs> that if there are two different letters, then they have totally independent truth values. So it's perfectly possible for both of these to be true at the same time, right? Because they're two different letters. But we don't want that to happen because if it, uh, we want this to have the opposite truth value of this. What kind of thing always automatically has the opposite truth value of you? Not you. That's right. It's not you, it's me. Okay, so that's the correct symbolization, and that will turn out to matter a lot. Okay, what now? Okay, well, just tell me, uh, well, let's, let's work it out, let's, let's work it through. So, we look for the or, and then we look for its herald word, it's there. So what does that tell us? It tells us that we put a parenthesis where the either is. Okay, now we've got this then, and we look for its herald word, it's there. There we go. And that's all we need. Okay. Life on the other side of the universe. Don't know. If you did know, you would give away that you were an alien and the men in black would come for you. Uh, it is carbon based. Again, we don't know. Apparently, it's possible to be silicon based. Uh, it will look like us. Don't know. If this is Doctor Who or Star Trek, it will, but that's because they have low budgets. Uh, we don't know. We don't know any of the truth values. So obviously, we can't work out the truth value of the whole thing. Or can we? Well, it's true. <laughs> the whole thing is true. Sure. <laughs> what, what would we do first? We would, we would do this one. And we can work out that this has to be true. Why does this have to be true? And this is why it matters that this is not yet if one is true, then the other is false. Yeah, because uh, let's imagine, how would we make this false? What is the only way a, a disjunction can be false? If they're both false. Why is that impossible? Because if we make this one false, that automatically makes this true. So it's impossible for them both to be false, so that means this has to be true. Okay. Now what do we do next? This conditional. Now, we, we don't know what the antecedent is, but we know that the consequent is true. Does that tell us what this must be? It must be true, because the only way for a conditional to be false is if the consequent is false. But this is true, so this must be true. And the same thing happens again for the other one, so that tells us that the whole thing is true. Ethan was right. Of course, he had a 50 50 shot. <laughs> Yes, there you go. So you can work occasionally work out the truth value of the whole thing without knowing the truth value of any of the components. 
All right, with more logic-related pranks, let me give you something working in reverse. So what we've been doing up to this point is we've got complicated propositions, and then we knew the truth value of the component propositions, and then we worked out the truth value of the whole thing. Let's see if we can do that in reverse. So for example, suppose I say, I'm going to tell you that this whole thing is true. With that information, you can work out what A, B, and C have to be. So you're working in reverse. Before, I would tell you what A, B, and C were, and you would work out the truth value of the whole thing. I'm now telling you that the whole thing, this thing, is true. And with that information, you should be able to work out the truth value of A, B, and C. Give it a shot. that the whole thing is true. So that means I can write the truth value of the whole thing under the main connective. What's the main connective? The ampersand. So the whole thing is true. Now, why does it help that this is an ampersand? Because there's only one way for a conjunction to be true, which is if both conjuncts are true. So this whole thing, this whole side, has to be true. Where do I write that true? under the tilde, under the main connective for, for that section. So this is true. And the same thing for this one. Now, if there's a true under this tilde, what does that tell me? There must be a false under the main connective inside the parentheses, which is the or. And why does it help that it's an or? Because there's only one way for an or to be false, which is if they're both False. So we've worked out what A and B is. A is false, B is false. How do we work out what C is? Well, what should I do immediately before I forget? We already know that B is false. So I'm going to fill that information in. And then I know that if this is true, what do I write under this? False. false. So that tells me that C has to be true. true. Because with uh, if and only if... Uh, it's false when they're different. So because B is false, C has to be true. 